Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Welcome. My name is Allison Bachmeyer, and we'll be uh, doing a little group session here today. And in addition to that, I'll be talking about Buddhism butterflies and just giving you just a, a wee bit of information on this Taji pole that I've referred to a couple of times in our, our work together and to transform emotions into energy. Linda Twa, <laughs> number three. We've done that a couple of times now. And this is a session to help integrate everything from that as well as to be introduced to some of these concepts. So it's fine if you didn't do the, the series and you're here just to have the experience of this. If anybody here is brand new to Body Talk, I'm going to point you in the direction of a couple of resources. If you'd like to learn more, you can check that out on my website, vibranttransformation.com. And you can also check it out on the international website on bodytalksystem.com. Okay. okay, so for our, our Taji pull, this is referred to as that pull of light. If you were there and, and or you listened to the recording of the Transform Emotion into Energy series where we dove into working with the, the first session, the fear one, transforming fear into healthy action. I talk about it there a little bit more and well not a little bit more I touch on it there and I'm here to talk about it a little bit more now so that that pole of light is thought to be uh, running between conception vessel one point and that point is on the perineum roughly the space between either the the testes in the vagina or the anus it's roughly in the middle there and that conception vessel one point is one of the the pole points if we want to think of it that way and then the other one is governing vessel 20 acupuncture point and this point governs our habit patterns it coats the um, the myelin sheath is the coating of the nervous system and the governing vessel 20 will support that as it is thought to be the area where those habit patterns are, are stored okay. So this pole runs between CB1 and GB20 and we have a number of acupuncture points along the way to support the capacity to have that light be uh, present and accessible and broad and stable and centered and you get the, the idea. Okay? So this, this pole of light is also thought to be the, the light that connects the chakras and the, the meridians weave through it all as well. It's also thought to be very strongly connected to one particular meridian, which is that of the, the kidney. And from our work in, in body talk, it also ties into three additional ones, governing vessel, primary masculine, that runs up the midline of the back body, conception vessel runs up the primary midline of the, the primary feminine that runs up the midline of the front body and the Chung, Chung Mo Meridian, which helps to, to nourish that and it helps to support things to, to rise. Very similar to the, the Spleen Meridian, for those of you who are on the Transform Worry Call, you heard a little bit about that there. So supporting the capacity for this light to, to rise and to be free in the central portion of the body is the essence of what these meridians are doing to support that all. And the, the kidney meridian in particular is really helpful with this. If the kidney reserves are weak, mm, not a lot of energy to move and flow through the system. Our life force energy feels very minimal. Sometimes that can show up in feeling compromised in our health. Uh, that can show up with different kidney issues and bladder issues alike. It can also show up with a myriad uh, of system, si pardon me, system symptoms <laughs> try saying that a few times well <laughs> and the idea with that is that again with the kidney meridians weak none of the other meridians have that extra reserve to draw on so it can create issues symptoms dis-ease lack of ease somewhere in the body mind which can make it a little challenging to get all the systems on board online present and available for healing and supporting your your vitality okay so that's just a little bit about the, the Taji pole. In my mind, I often see it as the, the pole upon which all of life dances around. 
So including the, the five elements, which we've been working with a lot as we've been talking about the healthy flow of the five emotions. I did a session yesterday which dove into just that topic. And if you're curious, the recording is posted on YouTube, on Facebook. It's been out on the, the emails in uh, all the Buddhas and Butterflies emails that have been sent out for promos as well. So you can access it there. And I've also posted it to my, my Facebook channel, Facebook page, <laughs> it pages, both the business and the, the personal one will have it there too. So there, there's lots of um, ways and avenues to be listening to this whole entire series. However, for those of you who would like to have access on an ongoing basis to transform emotions into uh, energy series, which will include these two integration sessions, feel free to sign on up for the, the Transform Emotions. It's free until Monday, June 8th. After that, it goes away, okay? So that's the, that's the spot, that's the space to look for that. If you would like to have these for lifetime access, all you need to do is sign up and you can draw on them as much as you like for on an ongoing basis. And people tend to get really great results doing group work sessions because there's something exponential about that energy when we work with a group versus working with an individual one-on-one. -on -one. That's fabulous, love doing that work too. But when there's a group container, there's something very supportive as we work together in community. Humans were designed and built to be in community with one another. We weren't built to just be in isolated little, little pods. So the sense of community is often very a, a loving essence that can be supportive, whether or not we um, tap into it in the same way that we do other communities where you may not have had the same type of uh, experiences. There's this idea that when we're in connection, when we feel safe to be in connection within our communities, it can support that capacity for everything that we're doing to be that much more powerful. And I'm likely misquoting this just a little bit, but there's that expression. The expression is, I believe from the, the Bible, which I'm not terribly uh, religious in any one particular fashion, uh, more, more spiritual. Nature might be my religion if we want to go that way. Uh, but the, the quote was something to the effect, when two or more are gathered in my name, there I shall be found. When two or more are gathered in my name, there I shall be found. So to me, there, there's certain magic in meeting together as a, a group. And I must admit, I also have a, a tendency to really love efficiency. So this is what I've seen in the group work that I've been doing for over 20 years now. And just before we go into doing a more experiential session with the, the Taji pole, and we uh, perhaps can play with that, that dance of light and what's weaving around it for you, whether it be the, the five elements or any other things that you might be attuned to, to uh, connect to then that pole of light. I'm going to briefly talk about Buddhas and butterflies as the doors are open for that right now. And they, they close on Monday, Monday, June 7th at midnight. Uh, I like to offer it usually once a year or so, and I like to keep the container quite closely knit. So this is why it only gets offered once a year. And I do cap it at, at 50 people. And I believe we have space currently for, I have to double check my numbers, but it, I think we have space for seven more or so as it stands right now. So it's been, it's been filling up pretty quickly. So if it intrigues you, if it calls to you, uh, please reach out and uh, jump in on that if this feels like it might be supportive for you. And on that note, what is Buddhism Butterflies, in case you don't know, you can check it all out on the website too, uh, but know that it's directed towards self-healers and healing practitioners. So if you're in that field as a professional, if you're in that field as somebody who is interested and devoted to healing and working through the lens of that to experience life, then this is the, the perfect spot for you to come play and uh, check out what it is we're doing here. The structure is doing four sessions a month, so we do weekly sessions. Some people join live. Honestly, most people end up listening to the recordings and doing it at a time that meets their needs and works for them. 
sometimes life doesn't flow on a weekly schedule. Have you noticed that? <laughs> so these sessions are available and here for you to do them whenever meets your needs. If you do one a month, you're saving a massive amount of money just from working with me one-on-one, -on -one, for instance, if we were to compare those rates. The, the price point for this is 75, pardon me, 77 a month or 770 a year. If you want to save yourself a couple of uh, payments there, you can choose to pay by the, the year. And in essence, I, I promise to never offer it at the same rate again. I am doing it this year just because of what's been happening around the, the world. So I am offering it at the same price. This will likely be the only time that we, we see that. but. Never say never, as soon as I do, I have to eat my words, is typically how that one goes. Okay. And with this, as we, as we meet regularly, um, through that, that month for $77, that's a whole lot different than paying for a one-off session with me would be 180 So we calculate the, the financials on that, it works out pretty well. And this is also why I offer the group format, to make it more affordable, to have regular work. And to be honest, where else are we getting that? <laughs> where else are we getting this kind of regularity and commitment and capacity to meet you where you're at? So the idea is not that you have to do all four sessions in a month or, or else. A lot of us are programmed, me too, um, from thinking that way, especially with our, our school systems operating in the, the way that they do and our worlds operating in the way that they do. Uh, we're often driven to, to think that we have to do it in order or have to do it, it perfectly. Um, I, I should probably be the poster child for all of that. Yeah, and uh, if I have some stiff competition out there, then all the, all the empathy yeah, for that show those challenges. However, we're going to switch that on its head. We're going to switch that on its head. So if you feel called to do one session a month, then that's all you need to do. Whichever one speak to, to you, this is here to meet you where you're at, not to be one more thing that you have to do. So it's a resource that you can tap into whenever it feels so desired, whenever it's available in your life, whenever you have space for it. And if that ends up being every week, then then yay. And if it ends up being once a month or however it unfolds, then, then yay. Okay. So that's a little bit about the, the structure of it all. Uh, the calls will be done live over Zoom, and then the recordings get posted shortly thereafter. Similar to how Transform Emotions into Energy has gone this week, except it won't be every, every day. Wouldn't that be an undertaking, can you imagine, every day, doing a, a session for a whole year? Woo. <laughs> Let, let's not plant that idea. <laughs> let's uh, uh, maybe um, give ourselves a little bit of space to integrate between our, our work. Uh, so I think weekly is more than sufficient. And even within the, the four a month, the fourth session is actually designed for just integration. In the sessions, I'm using primarily body talk as my framework. Having said that though, the tools that I'm drawing from and incorporating within that framework are multiple and, and varied. So a big chunk of it comes with the Sedona method, which is currently taught mostly by Hale DeWaskin, took it over from Lester Levinson. I use that work fairly regularly. And in and around that, there's also a, a set of additional tools and trauma work that I've been incorporating as well. So I also practice and I'm a facilitator of breath work. And this is not like the four, seven, eight breathing or, uh, you know, rigid types of breathing pranayama patterns or anything like that. This is more an experience to see what's here inside of you as you use a conscious connected breath. We use that set of tools along with a lot of different trauma release tools, which primarily incorporate bits and pieces from the Hakomi method, somatic experiencing. In addition to that, I'm pulling from tools of internal family systems theory, as well as uh, Dr. Gabor Matei's uh, compassion inquiry. Oh, the internal family systems stuff is by Dr. Richard Schwartz. So there is a vast array of tools that are out there. And um, the, some of these names are, have been around for a while doing the, the trauma release work. And I honestly am just so blessed to be able to study with these, these masters in their, their field. 
the, the breath work, I didn't mention where I studied that from, uh, is from Numa Somatics. It's actually a Canadian-based company over in Alberta. Feel free to uh, check any of them out. They're all wonderful resources, and I very much celebrate the, the capacities that have opened up in the studies of that all for me. Um, so if you're ready, if you're just looking for some relief, if you're looking for support, if you're looking for a sense of community, if you'd like to fall back into love with all that you're doing in your work, then this is a place where we can begin to reclaim that centeredness, that capacity to tap into our vitality, and to be able to deal with just a little bit more ease as we release some of those blockages and challenges that may be in the, in the way, seemingly in the way. Um, so if you're looking for a little bit more abundance and ease and flow and, and grace and some love, respect, dignity as a side dish or as a main dish along with that, then this is a, a place to begin to tap into some of those resources that you have inside of you. What's been getting in the way of blocking them is, is just another set of stories and emotions and trapped energy that contains and wraps around and dulls a little bit of that, that love and light inside of you in that Taji pool. Um, so those emotions are just nothing more than energy and motion, but the second we make them about us, the second we take them personally, is the second they end up diminishing as they trap a little bit of that, that light inside of us. So all of this work that we've been doing in our, well, I said five, but it's closer to seven, isn't it, days together, is to just reveal a little bit more of that, that light that's here within you. Okay? And as we're continuing Buddhas and Butterflies, we'll be doing that on an ongoing basis underneath the umbrella of the six senses. So we're going to move through that cycle of all the emotions, fear, anger, grief, break, take a week to integrate. We'll be doing a session that week, and I'll be pulling from a lot of different tools for the integration. And then we'll dive into, in the next set, grief, worry, and then all the extra emotions, which I haven't spent a lot of time talking about. Shame, guilt, apathy, anxiety type of things, overwhelm, and jealousy. And then the following week after that is integration again. So in total, we have about eight weeks or so there. And then that moves through the different lenses of the six senses. So we'll spend two months in each sense, in each, in each sense, there we go. Yeah, so we're gonna start with taste and then we'll move in through to all the remaining senses. The sixth sense, of course, is intuition, insight. And we'll be working with that one as well. So that's essentially the, the flow and the pattern that we'll be using as we navigate this material. And if you'd like a little support in just navigating those go, go, go busy worlds where we're often juggling a whole lot of different demands in our life, if you're looking to press that pause button and, and find a different way, then absolutely we can uh, take a peek at supporting you in all of your, your needs in that way. Okay. Oh, and somebody commented in the chat feature, best self-care. Mm, thank you. That's one of our, our current members. Yeah, thank you for supporting and being here. Mm. Um, I have another question here. Will it remove inequality and homelessness? I will look out if you're willing to explore what that means for you and look at the different belief systems, emotions, underpinnings behind that all and where that got programmed from initially. Most of our big issues in life and challenges in life tended to start at uh, interesting points, usually very early on, when it didn't seem like we had anything that we could be doing about that. The world usually tells us who it is we're going to, to be through our experiences of being in the womb and shortly thereafter. Those first few li years of life, in particular those first few months of life, are very powerful in terms of how it is where we're programming our experiences in life. Uh, I can tell you that I've had um, homelessness as my personal experience. It's, it's come close a couple of times in my earlier years, uh, but it hasn't been a, a thing for me personally, so I can't comment on specific things that I haven't experienced. I've certainly experienced a whole lot of inequality, and um, others have as, as well. This certainly isn't a, a me thing. 
and the, the perceptions of that have shifted and changed dramatically for me over the years. And if we're willing to commit to looking at what's really there, then it's my personal conviction, then yes, it's possible to transform whatever it is you like when we're doing the, the inner work to transport that. Okay. Okay, loves. I don't think I'm seeing any other questions in the, the chat feature, so feel free if there is anything else coming to you, including after our session, I'll take another peek at that. And let me know where things are at for you. And if there's any questions or curiosities or clarifications that I can provide, I'm happy to, to help out with that. Okay. So in closing, just to speak a little bit more to that, how we're seeing our outer world circumstances are simply a, a mirror, which doesn't usually feel so simple at all, of uh, what's happening on the, the inner world. So when we look at what's actually going on for us in here, it can change our experience of what seems to be happening out there. Okay, okay loves. On that note, I'm going to invite you, if you haven't already, to find a nice, quiet, cozy place where you can either sit or lay and be undisturbed for your session. And as you're getting comfy and cozy with that, know that for our, our timing, we'll be doing a a mini session, so to speak, a taster session. We'll have about 25, 30 minutes or so together, which is uh, usually more than enough to tap into some, some big pieces for people, as I've been seeing and that, that feedback that I've been receiving. I'll close with playing a, a song, a certain piece of music that I've selected that I feel might speak richly to integrating the, the different experiences that we've had in this week. And uh, after that, I'll, uh, I'll stop the the recording for anyone who is live, you are welcome to hang out for, uh, I have a few minutes, not, not a lot unfortunately this morning, uh, but I can meet up with you afterwards if you feel the call for some additional one-on-one -on -one support that's coming from our, our work together, okay? So as we begin, as we begin, just inviting your body-mind to settle in and make any adjustments and it's more than welcome to continue to move and groove and make any additional adjustments as we move through our, our time together here in our work today. And just connecting to your breath. In whatever way feels supportive here, there's something special about the breath. There's something special about the breath. It's the only functionality in the body that you can consciously control as well will continue to work without you even having to do a thing. The body-mind will just carry on breathing even when you're not paying attention to it. There's something special about this breath. So I invite you to consciously breathe. And as you do so, just scanning your body and mind, noticing what's here for you. Noticing what's here, what's present, what's alive for you in this space. And as you begin to breathe and get present to what's available for you. And as you settle in to the space of you, Thank you for being here and thank you for being you. Thank you for the presence, the gift that is you. And thank you to all that have created you.
thank you to your families, your ancestors, and the earth from which they came. Thank you for this land. Thank you for this land that we get to walk on that's been stewarded. And thank you to all those who have stewarded this land that we get to grace. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, to be alive, to be with you today. Thank you for this breath, every inhale and opportunity to take in new life to receive, to be. Every exhale, an opportunity to release, to let go, and to sink a little deeper into that support of this earth, the support of that cushion below you, that extends through the different furniture, through the different floors, down into the land, down into the earth. Just mindfully receiving this earth energy. If it feels right, if it calls to you, if you're open to it, breathing with the earth. You may hear some of my little earthly creature beings that I'm graced to spend time with in this lifetime, settling in as well in the background. You may hear some doggy noises. And as you're breathing with this earth, offering Pachamama, Mother Earth, this gift, of your life, of your breath. Mm. Yeah. And as we settle in, I'm going to invite you to scan this body mind again, looking for a part of you that feels pleasant, at the very least neutral. And when you land on whatever part of you that feels pleasant, at the very least neutral, taking a moment to connect here and to breathe here. And noticing what happens as you breathe into this area. and noticing what happens as you receive this nourishment. Yeah. Know that this is a resource you can tap into any time while we're working together. If you ever feel the call, feel free to come right here and just tap into this energy. You can take it with you throughout our entire journey today if you so desire. And as you're breathing and receiving this energy, I wish you blessings on this journey. We're going to start with working with connecting all the individual vertebrae, upper spine to lower spine, and then making our way in until they pair up in the middle. This spinal communication is thought to be like an antenna of consciousness, an antenna of connection to you and your outer world. And as you work with it, as you work with these vertebrae pairing, 
So there's unhookings from a couple of different spots, starting with the, the Ming Men, which is one of those major gates that often the Tajik pole gets restricted in its light from. It's often referred to as the pilot light of your body. Hangs out around that low back, lumbar two, three vertebrae, right in the middle of that low back. And it's composed of governing vessel four and bladder 23. So it's three acupuncture points right around this area. It's thought to be the gateway to receiving environmental energy and connection to, to life. When this pilot light is well fueled, the door can be wide open to receive this environmental energy, which can then get channeled around through to the area just below the navel along the conception muscle meridian. These two are meant to work in, in tandem. And I'm actually seeing a, a blockage here, which is constricting that flow of energy around to that front body. So as we work with the, the Ming men here, there's feelings of despair, hopelessness, as well as apathy. Why won't things change? Yeah. And within that, the frustration, the frustration that comes when people say things like, well, you know, we can transform our outer circumstances by looking at our inner circumstances. Yeah, those frustrations that arise when we're like, but but why isn't this happening already? And it can be difficult if we're not well resourced to tap into that that inner wisdom that's here that guides us. So think of all of this as cloudy, clouding, creating murkiness, creating haziness, fogginess, lack of clarity, lack of clarity in your connection to you to transform those circumstances. And as we work with this, it's releasing also the emotion of just feeling like pissed off around feeling stuck and things not changing. As you breathe into all the energy that's here, it's no small amount. We're gonna work with circulation of all the basic healing resources to get this area freed up. Starting with blood that carries our passion, nerve our communication, lymph that drains the toxins, gunk, waste, low self-esteem, overthinking, overanalyzing, along with chi, our vitality, consciousness, our awareness, right down into all the little guys, the electrons, the protons, the solitons, the neutrons, also working with the sounds, the colors, the frequencies of all the chakras, major and minor, the endorphins, the hormones, and the endocannabinoids that lower inflammation throughout our body, supporting mental health, and then working with balancing yin and yang, feminine and masculine energies, and then also working with the hydration, helping cells to absorb water and join, releasing impurities that just don't need to be here. We're actually bringing into this area and circulating through it all five elements, all five elements. And making sure that all five of them are getting embraced in, in a dynamic, responsive manner, and that there's flow between them, creating movements. Okay. And as this flow, as this movement comes in through that pilot of the body, pilot light, the Ming Men of the body, we're also releasing adhesions on either side of it through those bladder meridian points. And the bladder meridian points are tapping into just a little bit more of that feeling pissed off energy. And those feelings of being pissed off, going back into month three of life on this side of the womb, on earth side. Month three. And it was almost as if there was this sense of resignation that got set in with this pissed off and it kept it just anchored here. As we release that, we're going to also unwind the channel of the bladder meridian, which runs from the heels, actually it goes out further than that. It goes out to the pinky toe, the pinky toe, uh, the baby toe, uh, and uh, through the edge of the foot, rising up the back body, around the buttocks, up either side of the spine, just to the side. It's very centralized, this meridian. And then it rises up to the, the back of the, the skull. And to support this movement, bringing in the capacity to centralize your energy, to contain your energy, 
usually when we're, we're pissed off and we're in despair about it or anything else, the tendency is for that anger just loosely leak out everywhere and make it feel extra hopeless, like there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so we're just centralizing this. If you're in a position to do so, and don't do it unless it doesn't feel supportive to you, feel free to experiment with it if you're open to it is what that means. Taking your hands to the, I'll do it on my upper body just so you can see with ease, the inside of your legs, the inside of your legs, and just gently pushing in with your legs, five to 10% pressure. Not overdoing it, just five to 10%. And then backing off of that muscular activation slowly over a count of five to 10 until it comes to rest. And then feel free to repeat that a couple of times with the hands and the inner legs, inner thighs, if it's available, if it's open and if it feels supportive, doing it maybe another two, three times. And as you're doing it again, you're just slowly adding in five to 10 pressure, backing off slowly over a count of five to 10. If that doesn't feel supportive, if it's dysregulative in any way, then just leave that, leave that, touch back in on your resource if you need it. And as we're working with this energy, it helps to centralize the movements through the, the Taji pole, through that bladder meridian, and with the help of the, the kidney meridian as well, the bladder meridian often likes to protect the, the kidney. So if the bladder is pissed off and irritated, it can be difficult for the, the kidney to have its energy to rise and meet this Taji pole to create that healthy flow and to support all the other meridians from it. Okay, so right now, as we release the Peace along the bladder meridian. It looks like it's flowing quite nicely now. Mm -hmm. And releasing off of that Ming Men, that back body. Ah, beautiful work there. Moving into finding this balance now between bladder and kidney and allowing for this flow of light. And I'm seeing actually the kidney get a little bit strangled by the, the liver meridian kidney, fear, liver, anger, and they often show up together. They often show up together. Right now, the anger is also thinking it's protective in from the liver now. It's protective anger over the, the kidney meridian flow. I'll use my anger to protect. Yeah, I'll just stay pissed off and, and fight my way through through life. And we're working actually with active memories, a series of emotional charges from your experiences around being born in that birth canal and having to, it's a struggle, having to fight, having to transition in that way, in that space, in that time. And setting the stage for shortly thereafter when you were born to also continue that, that energy of fight. It just felt like there was more of a struggle than needed to be. It needed to be, there wasn't a release of that fight energy from the, the birthing process itself. And it's linked to the belief system of life is hard. Life is hard. Mm -hmm. And as we release and unwind that belief system, we're unhooking it from the family lineages as if the family lines were trying to support you with letting you know how hard life is gonna be. So you better be prepared to fight and struggle. This is more than about you. This is going back quite a ways. We're going back 12 generations. 12 generations through both sides of the family lines, through mom and dad, but looking at that ancestral pattern, that life has to be fought, that life has to be hard, that life has to be fraught with difficulties and challenges, just to find a sense of you, to prove your worth, is really this idea of the, the struggle. It needs to be here so you can prove how, fill in the blank, you are. As we unwind that patterning, that thinking, these beliefs, this lineage, working with cellular repair, restoring the cells back to their fullest potential of health. And as we do so, connecting this kidney meridian into this pole of light, into both spots where it begins and ends, while it really extends, we could argue, to infinity itself. 
beyond all space and time. Discovery Vessel 20 point that I referred to earlier in the call on the CV1 point in that perineum. So between crown and perineum, between crown and perineum and allowing this kidney meridian to create union with these beginnings and endings, these cycles that continue throughout life. As we link them into these acupuncture points, you may even begin to notice something inside the center of you. Whatever that appears as, if it feels right, just invite that in with a, a yes. There might be the sensation of something, there might be a memory of something supportive. Whatever arises here, just allowing for that to express and, and move through you. And I see this energy, this flow of that light, that pole of light merging at the heart as it enters from the crown, the perineum coming together in the heart, which is not typically the pathway that we think of. We always tend to think of it has to flow from the base up. Yeah. So just switching that up a little bit today and exploring this in a, a different way you may invite some different experiences with it if you're open to it. And as you play here in the heart now with this energy, just noticing what's available in the, the heart, what's here for you. We're going to do an emotional release of overwhelm out of a fear of not being able to handle this heart energy. The heart energy is 60 to 100 times bigger than any other energy fields around it all. And it's meant to be a place of neutrality. It's meant to be a place of pause. It's meant to be a place of stillness. There is a little bit of work that we need to do with that conception vessel point just below the navel in that center of the hara, the center of our core. That'll help to support some of this work at the heart. Part of why it feels a little bit overwhelming in the heart is it doesn't feel like there's enough energy getting up to the heart to sustain this. So as we work with that energy, it's gonna come from that area just below the navel, this, this hara. So if you like, feel free to take a hand, to heart, hand to area just below the navel if that feels supportive for you. And as you breathe into, this area below the navel, all the rich blood vessels that live here. I see all the branching those blood vessels form the tree of life. So imagine that the tree of life and the elements of wood are present here to support expansion. And as you breathe into this and support this expansion project in whatever form and style of breath that feels supportive for you here. Supporting the capacity to adapt to life and finding adaptability, releasing a little bit of rigidity around this is the way it has to be, this is the way it should be. Our have to's or should's often block what is, what gets to be. We're just looking at releasing the habit pattern of micromanaging life. How is it you micromanage life? How is it you micromanage your experiences so that you feel that they can't take you over and overwhelm you? Nothing wrong with having micromanaged. You did it for a really good reason, a really good reason. And now there may be room for another way. As you tap into this energy of micromanagement, Just begin to notice what's here for you. What emotions are here? What do you feel about this? Two 
tune into with all five senses. If micromanaging how to taste to smell, what would it taste or smell like? If micromanaging had a sound or a message or a word, what might that be? And if micromanaging had a visual, what would it look like? Is there an image, a color, a texture? As you tune into this energy of micromanaging, can you also welcome all that goes with it, all those stories, judgments, ideas, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, wants, desires, needs, and anything else about micromanaging, calling that in. and welcoming it. And also welcoming the need to change or fix or have this be some other way. The need to fix, the need to push, often prevents it from just doing what it's going to do and release easily all on its own. So it might feel counterintuitive. I invite you to play an experiment if it feels right to you to welcome this need to fix or change or have micromanaging be in some way, shape or form different than exactly what it is. And then with that, welcoming, welcoming the sense that this is yours, that it's personal, that it's meant to be yours to carry. And if you're open to it, welcoming the all that is beyond this, welcoming what is beyond all of this. As you do so, I just see layers of resentment releasing from here, as well as from the back of the shoulders, the base of the back of the shoulders, releasing the need to struggle, and with it, the need to have to control. And in doing so, there's just little bits and releases of micromanaging energy that just begin to release and transform. As you breathe into that area, just below that navel, I invite you to just again tune into micromanaging energy with all five senses and noticing what's different here, what's changed. And if you feel the call, make anything that remains here more seemingly rich, real, intense. Breathe into it and notice how much is here. Is this roughly the shape of a pea, a ping pong ball, a tennis ball, a grapefruit, volleyball, beach ball, bigger. And as you notice how much is here, imagine that you can loosen up the edges with your breath. 
and breathing that together into your hands. When you have the sense that you've got most or all of it, feel free to just unhook and release that here. I'm going to do it on my end as well. And if that process isn't calling to you, then leave that be for now. Yeah, thank you. And as you're breathing into this region, feel free to make an extra pass or two, releasing anything that needs to go. We're just working with allowing this energy from the Hara to feed that light and begin to rise. As it hits this diaphragm, there's, there's some fear. And this time it's actually a fear of tolerating the, the joy, the bliss, the ecstasy. Just gonna remind your body mind that things are different now. They don't have to be like they were in the past. Your joy can be safe now. Your ecstasy, your bliss can be safe now to feel. I'm just inviting that to rise in its own timing, moving at the speed of trust, moving at the speed of trust, and just allowing for this energy. If it feels supportive to keep a hand on the pelvis, please do. And it's rising up to the heart, if it feels and rides and it calls to you to place a hand there as well, you're welcome to do so. And as we connect pelvis and heart, hara and core, light and light, I invite you to get present and breathe to this light that is you. And just allowing and noticing where this light moves. If it feels supportive to move your body, you're welcome to do that. If it feels supportive to breathe, if it feels supportive to make a sound to support it, woo, can be one that's very powerful. And as you breathe into this light, this love, this you, this being, we're going to do a, a cellular repair through now mom's side of the family lines. And this is on the theme of allowing the feminine to live in light. to be seen, to be heard, to be front row stage center, to be present and supporting this all with the permissions. My feminine is safe to be here. My feminine is safe to be here. And as the body mind receives that yin, that feminine, that presence of love that it is, that it is, releasing through the family lines, those bits around having to stifle, having to be quiet, having to dim expression out of fear out of fear, out of fear of that feminine power that is. As we work with that, bringing in the planetary energies of the moon and Venus to support with their feminine grace, with their power, to support cyclical natures and releasing with that, within that, through means of grace, of beauty, of comfort, of joy of connection, of community, of being, of stillness. I'm doing an emotional release of sadness now. Just to the left of thoracic one vertebrae, just to the left of the top of that place where the 
the first rib comes in and attaches. And I'm just seeing this first rib uh, as you were leaving the birth canal, getting jammed up. And with it, it's carrying this energy of, I have to be stopped. My body has to be stopped. My feelings have to be stopped. My emotions have to be stopped. The chaos has to be stopped, controlled, limited, governed. I'll take charge, I'll take control are the belief systems here. I'll figure it out, I'll live from the head, I'll know better, I'll know best are in here as well. And as we release that energy from this first rib on the left side, freeing up the capacity for a new way of being to enter all the way through to that left brain. Yeah, just allowing all the logic, all the logic, all the reasons, all the excuses, all the limitations that seem so rational and real to be treated with the grace and the love that they're looking for. Fighting against them hasn't worked, has it? So let's extend to them some compassion, some love for providing all that they have for you. Thank you for showing alertness. Thank you for showing the capacity to move with efficiency. Thank you for all that you provided this intellect, this logical half of you. And just as it's unwinding and releasing through means of being loved and respected and worshiped and adored. It begins to release its foothold, its grip, its need to further control and micromanage and limit this life of yours. And there's adhesions releasing off of where the left side of the skull joins the spine. And as that's releasing, I actually see the energy of governing vessel 20 realigning into the center is almost a little bit pulled off to the side through the strain of the connective tissues pulling and supports all these left brain struggles, shall we say. Yeah. And now as we integrate this, allowing for the connection between heart and head to align connecting heart to left brain, to right brain, to midbrain. And then connecting it up to the prefrontal cortex, right in the center point. This prefrontal cortex is our center for wisdom of empathy. Can you extend that wisdom, that empathy, this compassion that's here to yourself? and allow this to move through all areas of the brain, reptilian brain, limbic brain, cortical brain, quadrium brain, heart brain, gut brain, all the areas of brain. And it's the nervous system energy and all this brain energy open to receiving the energy of the heart. What if it could drink in just a little bit more than that? If you need touching on that resource to support this project at any time. And if this feels like it's at its natural stopping point, then no need to push. This is a game of allowance, of allowing. And as heart meets brain energy, Allowing it to soften the need to have to drive forward by means of figuring it out, thinking, finding the right way and opening up to possibilities beyond right and wrong, good or bad. Opening up to possibilities that may seem to come from thin air in a non-linear logical fashion. Opening up the capacity for that intuition, that insight, that right brain to be in balance with the left brain logical action that it's meant to provide, supporting this right brain awareness and integrating. That's integrating deeply into the midline structures where the two connect of the head brain in particular. It's also meaning the center point of the, the heart brain. 
And all of the gut brain isn't so easy to visualize as having a central point if you're familiar with Western anatomy. Imagine that it's also weaving into its own particular form of alignment and centralizing this gut brain energy as well. And allowing brain energy to stay centralized and focus so that way it can stay in its role and the heart energy, the heart brain energy as well can stay in its role. And these two are meant to support one another and dance with each other, just to balance heart and brain, balancing compassion and knowing. Combining loving and presence. Combining harmony and observation. All the faculties of the heart combining with all the faculties of the brain and merging together, coming together. As they come together, there's this magical little space between them that also contains centralized energy. As we find the center point, linking that all into, again, this Taji pole of lights. I'm running a permissions here. I can play here. And imagine that the heart energy, the brain energy can play alike. I always see those images of people dancing around like the Mayflower pole or around the, um, maybe not the best imagery with that one, the, the rituals that I saw in Mexico where they traditionally performed ceremonial dances that were weaving around a, a pole in a, a similar type of, of manner as what I was educated on in, in my history of my youth uh, with the Mayflower pole. And all the different rituals where people dance around the, the center point, the dance around the pole, there's many. And they all seem to have something similar like that in every culture and tradition around the world. So imagine that all this energy of brain, of heart, is just dancing around the center pole. And as you place your attention here on this pole of lights, we're going to connect all five senses, physical and subtle alike, and just releasing any layers that are ready to go so that you can more deeply be in the presence of this light for you, whatever is available. And as we do so, releasing a layer of sadness around feeling like there's separation from that, from the pole and the rest of you, the pieces that aren't there. Yeah. And as we release this layer of sadness that's wrapped around the pole, it's carrying with it the energy of loneliness. And what if it wasn't actually loneliness? What if it was actually the energy of all one, all oneness? Yeah, what if, as we release this layer of sadness here, There's also a layer of shame. And the shame is around enjoying this pleasure of light that is you. And within it is this voice, you gotta take life seriously. You gotta be responsible, you gotta grow up. Wherever those voices come from, from you, mom, dad, caregiver of any sort, grandparents, just gently handing those voices back. Just gently handing those voices back to their source of where they came from. And in its own way, unwinding, unwinding anything that's in the way. Thank you. And as we do this, releasing another emotion of blame. And as we release this layer of blame, you may hear a voice or two and if it feels right, you can feel free to hand those voices back as well. And just coming into the essence now beyond the voices. 
It is safe to be here. It is safe to love. It is safe to live. This love, as you breathe into that space of this life, this love, this light. Allowing, just allowing this light, this love, this life to be here just as it is. What if there wasn't anything to do? What if the being is enough? Could you welcome yourself to be here just as you are? Could you welcome yourself to be here? Maybe even a little bit more than that. Could you welcome yourself to be here even a little bit more than, than that if you're open to it? Let's tap this in. I invite you to breathe in whatever way feels right for you. I just see another layer of fight energy releasing off of the back of the heart. It's on the right side. I invite you to just scan your body and mind, noticing what's different here, noticing what's changed. And setting yourself up to get nice and comfy and cozy. Making any little adjustments if you need them as you're scanning. Just gonna put some music on here. This one's a little bit longer than normally that I that I play. However, it's my all-time favorite, so I couldn't resist with ending with this one. Thank you for being here. Thank you to all that's brought you here. Thank you for calling in this work. And thank you for the courage. It's always an honor to witness the beauty of the courage that's required to do this work. Yeah. As I'm looking at the, the chat features, yeah, you're most welcome. And thank you for the, the blessings, yeah. There is this um, little bit of me that feels drawn to also answer a, a question that was on here as well, uh, that was directed to me personally. So it might not be visible to everybody who is uh, on the, the live call. I, I didn't refer to them, but yes, the area just below the Hara, or that I refer to as the Hara just below the navel is also known as the Lower Dantian. The lower Dantian means that there's an upper Dantian and there's also a, a middle Dantian and these all support the uh, movement of energy through the central pole and although I didn't name them as such, the region of the heart is roughly around that middle Dantian and the, the head is referring to that, that upper Dantian as well. Now, depending upon where we learn our, our spiritual anatomy from, those can have um, some, some different spots and, and places, depending upon how you uh, learned about them. And uh, yes, they are very much included in the, the work that we did, even though they were referred to as, as different names. Okay. So thank you for that question. If there's any other clarifications, curiosities, and if you're live on the call, I welcome you to stay on. Even if you just want to say goodbye, I'm going to stop the recording here in, in just a moment. And um, it's been such a pleasure and a joy and really an honor to share this work throughout these seven days in this way with you all. Blessings to you as you continue your journey and know that I'm available for anything if you would like additional support related to the, the work that we've been doing. Okay. So mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye for now, loves. <laughs>